Let's talk Chrome about the Mountain to Dead Chromebooks. Yeah. I think this is interesting. I think you're being a hater right now. Uh, so I'm going to make be. you read the topic. You read right, the topic. sounds good. Schools yeah. struggle with mountains of dead Chromebooks. During mountains. the pandemic, American schools bought a massive number of Chromebooks. Massive. According to a recent report, those schools now have a massive number of unusable massive. devices. Unusable. <laughs> I'm your hype man. <laughs> In part because of the obvious cheapness of the materials, but also because the devices are hitting the end of their security updates. Officially, Chromebooks get five to eight years of updates. Five to eight years. But their auto expiration date is determined by when the device was certified, not when it was sold. Google tells users to expect an average of four years four of years at time of sale. After Chromebooks pass that expiration date, they can no longer access secure websites, including state testing sites. Okay. Pointless changes to basic parts between different models make the Chromebooks difficult to repair. For example, six different manufacturers of the Chromebook 11 made cosmetic changes to the plastic bezel that made parts incompatible between models. Luckily or not, many schools have large stockpiles of busted Chromebooks to salvage parts from, but salvage is inefficient by design. Yeah. Usually, if a Chromebook has a single broken key, the entire keyboard needs to be replaced. One school official reported that a typical repair involves replacing half the device. Yeah. There was an interesting anecdote from Wednesday's TechLinked episode where Gideon Fraser commented, Fun fact, after having worked as a hardware tech guy in a Georgia school, I can go ahead and tell you that these Chromebooks are actually closer to 90 US dollars a piece, and these kids obliterate them. <laughs> if a key is bad, you can go to the back room filled to the brim with broken Chromebooks, look for one with a functional keyboard and part match, Actually, you do that with every fixable component on these god-awful machines. <laughs> we don't really buy any part re parts replacements because we already have enough broken ones that we should have any part we would need that would actually be viable to fix. Whew. And then uh, another person responded as well. As a fellow tech in Texas, I can confirm those damn screens are just constantly coming in shattered. <laughs> This just in, kids not careful with their things, yeah. especially when they aren't their things. Yeah. More at 11. Yeah. Um, I don't think them breaking often would be different if it was a Chromebook or not. I actually don't either. I think that yeah. kids would be very likely to break school-owned laptops regardless Dude. of whether they were Chromebooks or MacBooks or Windows books or I whatever. I used to get so enraged at how people would treat the computers in the, like... The lab Computer that you labs. and your friends built? Yeah. like, But even the ones that we didn't, because like we had such a low budget that like if you break the optical drive on this thing, we don't get another one. And people would be shoving like garbage. They would take like yeah. candy wrappers and put in the optical drive and sh shove it closed. Like I used to have a little tool I would walk around with to be able to do the manual pop out of optical yep. drives so I could pull them open and take trash out. Like it's so annoying like don't like if you don't destroy everything more of the budget can go towards making this place nice yeah I, can we stop like oh, man it used to be so frustrating so i'm not surprised that people would it's not surprised that people would trash these so this is going to happen with whatever and i don't believe most laptop keyboards that i know of have like user user repairable individual keys I mean, so like a lot of these complaints, I'm I'm coming down on like, I don't know if I can rag on the Chromebook for this. No, it's not Chromebook specific. But what is very frustrating is the fact that these devices will expire that yes on average in four years. Yeah. I mean, I just bought a Chromebook for my uh, middle child because uh, she needs it for school next year. And I'm sitting here going, oh, well, I didn't think to check if it was certified <laughs> like yesterday or a year ago or two years ago or four years ago. It's modern hardware, so probably it was certified fairly recently, but I didn't think to check that. And I can see how that would be exactly the sort of thing that whether it's yes. a parent or whether it's a buyer for a school district or whatever else, there's so many other factors to consider other than when the device was certified that 
honestly, I I just I straight up think that this should just be illegal. And laptops are better now. There were like when I was kind of late high school, yeah. it was general wisdom that if you bought a laptop, it lasted three years. Yeah, within three years, it was going to be crap anyway. That's not but really a thing anymore. That's not true. You could buy a ThinkPad that's ten years old on yeah. like eBay. You know, like that's core, just second gen core, third gen core. I mean, oh, I mean, man, fourth gen core is almost 10 years old at this point. And that'll be very usable today. As long as you can make sure that you get proper security on it, you update yes. the heck out of it. And then you're just like browsing the internet. That's fine. Who cares? So what is our justification for allowing this stuff to just expire this way? And back to the part that I think should actually be illegal. Why are we allowing companies to continue selling these products well into their lifespan knowing that what the customer is buying today is a significantly shorter shelf life than what they bought at the beginning of the product cycle. You should cycle. have to, well, you shouldn't really be able to do it at all, but you should have to communicate like this device has 800 days left until it is garbage when you buy the thing. It's, well, if you're going to hard lock it like that, I mean, if it's going to be a degraded experience, Okay, fine. You know, like Apple doesn't roll out new Mac OS updates for their Macs forever. Yeah. At some point, you do have to deprecate the hardware. That that, that actually is fine. You can, it's, it would be enormously burdensome for so, them to have to support it forever. It's not what I'm asking for. Someone in float plane chat, uh, Mike D78 said, "I'm watching this show on a fourth gen i5 ThinkPad. Works fine." Exactly. Right. Yeah. And and so what I'm what I'm saying is knowing that, assuming the kids don't beat the crap out of it, the hardware could still be good in more than four years, or even more than five or eight years, it should be communicated. And this is something that I will often tell people when they're shopping for a phone. When people ask me for advice for a phone, I almost never give an exact model because then it's my problem if they don't like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But what I will do is I'll give them some tech tips. And one of the ones that I will really, really try to emphasize is hey, you need to think about it in terms of total cost of ownership. And I know that that's more of a business the way of considering things, but in our personal lives, it's very applicable. If you buy a brand new iPhone today, right? You can buy a brand new iPhone from the last generation. It's cheaper, right? It's also not as good, but a big part of the reason it's cheaper is not the hardware. It's the support. So if the difference in price between, a, let's just use arbitrary numbers, between a $1,000 iPhone and an $800 iPhone, okay, is one-fifth, but that $1,000 one is going to last for five years, and that $800 one is going to stop getting support in four years, guess what? They're the same. Are oh, you wanting me to say it? Sure. Cost of ownership, total cost of ownership. Exactly. Now, that's not always true, Right. It depends what kind of user you are. Are you the type of person that uses your devices into the ground? Well, okay, then what I just said is very applicable. But if you're the kind of person who's going to upgrade in two years or three years anyway, then it becomes more of a question of, well, are the features important to you? Uh, as opposed to just the, the total cost you're going to pay per year of owning the device, right? Because then all of a sudden, they're the same. Um, in terms of their software expiry. So you, so you start to move on to other factors. But it's, it's a really important thing to consider, especially with Android phones. Buying a year-old Android phone, particularly a few years ago when they weren't getting support the same way that, I mean, Samsung does what, four years now, I think, three? Oh, oh yeah, if, if you don't mind looking that up, it would be that would be good to know. Uh, but there was a while there where you, know, you were getting one, two, <laughs> very rarely three major Android updates on your Android four phone. Four years. Four years, yeah. So they do four years now at least. Um, but it wasn't always that way, and not all vendors have that level of commitment. And so if you're buying it a year into the cycle, don't be fooled. If it's 20% off, that ain't a deal. <laughs> you're, just, you're just buying old hardware at full price, right, for how long you're going to be able to use it. So... Uh, latest pixels are apparently five years now, which is which is really great. And yeah, that's it's it's a major factor that you should consider.